One of the best qualities of Son Goku is nothing more than his pure heart, and hitting his head combined with the ideals engraved with him through Grandpa Gohan, Goku became a kind soul. But today we'll look at a scenario in which Goku doesn't hit his head. But not just that, we'll be altering his personality to be more Saiyan-like amongst other slight changes. Today we discuss, what if Goku was evil? Following his arrival on Earth, Goku is taken in by his adopted grandfather, Gohan. After finding the boy and taking him in as his own, Gohan would pass by a ravine one day with Goku alongside him. All of a sudden, the boy takes a leap out of what he was being carried and hurtling down towards the ravine. Quickly seeing this, Gohan jumps down and catches Goku. Facing his palm down towards the ground, Gohan uses his other hand and the force of wind to push them back up, saving Goku from near death. But Goku wasn't the only one facing death. Not long after, he would turn into a great ape through looking up at the full moon and his attention was set on killing any and all that stood in his way. That meant killing Gohan. At first, Gohan didn't know what it was. He just thought it was a beast. He cared more for finding Goku and saving him from this, but little did he know, Goku was that thing. He was quickly attacked with Goku jumping towards him, but his martial arts ability allowed him to swiftly dodge. Gohan didn't want to engage in a fight, but Goku started sending beams from his mouth towards him. He realized that he had no choice but to fight, although he had no way of beating this monster. It was too large and simply attacks weren't working. He then decided to try something that he hadn't attempted in years. Cuffing his hands together, Gohan charges a Kamehameha, firing at the ape who counters it with his own blast. Gohan pushes forward, charging up as much energy as he could, which overtakes Goku. As he looks at the beast on the floor, he realizes that it has a tail. Just like Goku. Could it be? No. How could Goku turn into such a beast? He continues to look for him, but to no avail. When the night passes, what he feared is shown to be true. In the same spot that he had defeated the monster, Goku was shown lying unconscious. But the problem was that this Goku retained the memory of Gohan attacking him. His Saiyan instincts continued to lead him to want to kill Gohan, and this only amplified his rage. He felt betrayed, and the next time he turns into an ape, he hunts Gohan down. Gohan's love for Goku was greater than his desire for survival. He knows he can stop him with another Kamehameha, but it would need to be stronger, as Goku was stronger. But it would probably kill him, so he decides against it. He simply accepts his fate. As expected, Goku kills Gohan, and the following years are agony for him. Goku's alone, and while he was originally in this story, the loneliness would drive him further towards insanity. Reliving the moment of killing Gohan over and over again drives the Saiyan mad. Bulma would come around eventually, but she meets a Goku who's basically lost touch with reality. <laughs> kind of insane, but Goku did indeed keep the 4 star Dragon Ball not to remind himself of his great loving grandpa, but instead he keeps it to remind himself that he can't trust anyone. Bulma promises him a great adventure and this leads Goku to ask if he'll be able to fight people, the only thing he misses about having Gohan around. He has no one to spar with. Hoping to leave with the Dragon Ball, Bulma just says yes, even though she actually has no idea. They head off on their adventure which will first lead them to find Turtle, who Goku chooses not to help this time around. Although in searching for the next Dragon Ball, they would still run into Roshi, who gives up the Dragon Ball after the little reveal from Bulma. Goku doesn't get the Nimbus Cloud because they didn't find Turtle for Roshi, and even if he'd gotten it, his heart isn't nearly as pure as it needs to be to ride it. They head off to a village for the next ball where they encounter Oolong, and while Goku initially plays along with Bulma's plan to trick him, once it goes off the rail and he's attacked, Goku fights much more viciously. He isn't fighting to subdue Oolong, he outright kills him, although the fact that he didn't put up much of a fight and was actually a shape-shifting pig all along upsets Goku. His next fight comes in the form of Yamcha, which is a much more fair and exciting one for him. Much like the original series, Goku's hunger gets the better of him and he isn't able to fight at full capacity. Although Yamcha is given a huge challenge with Goku constantly getting back up and ready to fight each time he's put down, lending a few good punches of his own as well. The nail in the coffin is Yamcha's wolf fang fist which renders Goku unconscious, but when he gets up, he's hell bent on revenge. Yamcha had not only defeated him, but he also took Bulma's capsules. Using the power pole, he shoots himself upwards and scouts the area, eventually finding Yamcha and fighting him once more. This rematch goes in his favor more so as he kicks Yamcha through mountains. He extends the power pole, using it to propel himself forward and landing a brutal punch to his face. Yamcha tries to use the wolf fang fist again, but this time it doesn't work. He evades it before snapping Yamcha's neck. He then turns and kills a terrified Puar. Bulma's definitely shocked throughout this journey as a lengths Goku's willing to go and fight, although she's not afraid of him. He's helping her get Dragon Balls and at the same time defending her from people like Yamcha who steal her belongings. They would run into the Ox King next and at first Goku sees him as an enemy. He tries to fight him but Ox is a martial artist trained by Master Roshi. He isn't going down, although he has absolutely no intention to hurt Goku and he tells him so. They eventually resolve the Fire Mountain issue and get the Dragon Ball from him. Chi Chi tries to prevent him and even asks the bride question but Goku is by no means interested. He outright rejects her and flies away, which makes her wonder why. Is it because she can't fight? This would lead her to want to learn martial arts and be more interested in it than originally, wanting to earn Goku's validation. Now it's just Goku and Bulma against the Pilaf gang, who managed to trick them into entering the castle and getting hit with the gas that puts them all to sleep. When waking up later, Goku sees the full moon and knows what he has to do to save her. He doesn't have full control over it, but it's not completely uncontrollable. He can pick targets. 
he knows what he's trying to do. It's just that he can't control what he does after he finds that target. Turning into a great ape, he helps Bulma escape, and before they can make the wish, Goku uses the blast from his mouth, blowing away the Pilaf gang, but they manage to barely survive for the time being. He then proceeds to go on a rampage, not having much control, destroying any and all surroundings. Bulma stands there, unsure of what to do. She turns to see Goku, and in the other direction, she sees the dragon. She wishes for him to turn back to normal, an easy wish for Shenron to grant. Goku goes back into base, but he isn't really happy with Bulma's decision to turn him back. She's just like Gohan. She wants to stop him from being what he is. He gets prepared to kill her, but then their journey flashes before him. She promised him good fights, and he got that. She hasn't really done anything to him. Struggling with what to do, Goku fights the urge to kill her and simply runs away into the forest. He continues to run until he can't anymore, proceeding to pass out. Hours later, he wakes up to a man standing next to him, wearing a pink gi. He introduces himself as Tao Pai Pai. He gets up, ready to fight him off, but Tao simply smirks prepared for what's about to happen. Goku punches him, but he does no damage. He tries to kick, but Tao easily evades. For hours, the man in pink lets Goku do his worst, but nothing. Goku is unsuccessful, and when he's on his last straw, Tao strikes back, hitting his neck and making Goku pass out for good. When he wakes up, he's at some dojo. Looking around in a blur, his eyes focusing on a symbol, a crane. He walks around as Shen introduces himself as the master of the crane school. On his right is Ten Shin Han, his top student, and on the left is Chao Tzu. From behind them, he sees a man in pink walk by. Looking back up at Shen, he's asked the question, do you want to train? Do you want to fight? Goku smiles, ready to get stronger. His main competitor in training is Tien. As of right now, Tien is far stronger than him and far superior in combat. He's ruthless and never holds back when they spar, taking Goku out most of the time. But training with someone stronger than him to start off gives Goku a much higher goal to achieve, one that he works day and night to get to. This pushes him to get stronger faster and his training to get to it is brutal. But this more aggressive fighting style resonates with Goku more so than the more common methods of the turtle school. This training would push him and Tien to newer heights as they would both be respected rivals for one another. Every now and then, then he would also see Tao walk by, wanting to challenge him again, but every time he asks, Shen shuts him down. Now is not the time. He's not ready. For now, they're going to participate in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament, and show their dominance over all other martial artists. Far away on Master Roshi's Island, Krillin and Chi Chi are training for the same purpose. Chi Chi was determined after being outright rejected to train up and impress Goku, so she seeked out training from her father, but he was against it. He didn't want to train her. He was worried that she would get hurt and that's something he didn't want for her, but then he thought, maybe he doesn't have to do it. His old Old Master Roshi could do it instead. So the Ox King sent Chi Chi off to train up and that's where she met Krillin. The two would train up and Chi Chi would obviously be the substitute for Goku, shutting Krillin's cocky self up. Roshi would be impressed with her potential and both of them would learn the Kamehameha. The final challenge as students of Roshi was going to be the Tenkaichi Budokai, which is where they would encounter the Crane School. For the Crane School to be part of this tournament, we'll have to replace some of the original fighters. Yamcha's already dead so Chaozu would take his place. Tien can replace Ranfan and Chi Chi would replace Giren. The first bout is between Krillin and Bacterian. After being reminded that he doesn't have a nose by Chi Chi, the turtle student easily overcomes his opponent. Shen laughs from the sideline. If that's the best Roshi has to offer, this tournament will be a walk in the park for his students. Speaking of Roshi, he was posing as Jackie Chun, and his first fight was against Chao Tzu. While Chao Tzu is formidable, he's no match for Roshi, with the turtle hermit easily knocking him out using the force of his blow to create a strong enough gust to win. Tien would face Nam, who is a formidable opponent, but Tien is stronger than the Goku Nam lost to in the original tournament. Nam would still provide a good fight using the cross-arm dive technique to put as much pressure on Tien as possible, although the three-eyed crane student would use his ability to fly to avoid the dive and fire a Dodon Ray to take him out. With Chi Chi taking gear in place, she would face up against Goku next, hoping to impress him and earn his validation. But more so, his heart. She powers up and it comes as a shock to Goku that she's actually gained quite a bit of strength. The daughter of the Ox King has an impressive amount of potential, although will it be enough in comparison to Goku? He takes his stance and while being impressed and even respecting her to a degree, Goku has no care for her. Not like he cares for another, at least. He would engage in combat with her as the two exchange blows. Goku wins the exchange, striking her with a punch to the face. She comes back with a Kamehameha, but Goku fires a Donan Ray to counter. Chi Chi puts her all into it, but with just a little bit more effort, Goku wins the beam struggle and sends her flying out of the ring. She's more broken than bruised, accepting that she won't be winning Goku over. The next fight is between Master and Student, Roshi and Krillin. Krillin does force Roshi to try a little bit with the young student flying in with a kick that Roshi blocks. He counters with a stunning punch to the face before kicking Krillin back. He stops himself on the edge of the ring, powering up and charging back in with a full force punch. Roshi attempts to teach Krillin a lesson in not putting all his faith in one blow. Using the aftermath to trick Krillin, he appears behind him and uses the Kamehameha to blast him out of the ring. The following fight is between students, between rivals, Goku and Tien. 
Knowing how Tien fights, Goku rushes in, grabbing onto his leg with his tail and swinging around to land a punch to his face. Tien dodges and attacks back. Their fists collide with the two smirking. At the same time, they land kicks on each other, being sent back but dash forward again, getting into an intense exchange. Tien flies up to escape, but having trained with the crane school, this Goku can fly as well, flying up alongside him. The two fire Doran rays at each other with the beams blowing up midair as they continue to close the distance. Goku dodges one and lands a kick to his face, sending him up. Flying behind him, Goku prepares a strike with his elbow, but Tien grabs his arm, sending him crashing to the ring. Tien prepares a tri-beam, but Goku looks up, ready to fly towards it with no fear. He brings the full force of the beam down as Goku uses the key shield to power through it, slowly taking more and more damage as he inches closer to Tien. An aura of the great ape surrounds him as his eyes turn yellow. He roars before reaching the top and landing a brutal punch to Tien's face. Having observed the previous fights, he takes a page out of Roshi's book and uses the after image to trick Tien, dodging an attack before striking him in the back with multiple Dodon rays. Tien sends down, laying battered and bruised at the bottom of the ring. Goku lands next to him, preparing a blast in his palm. He lifts Tien up with his other hand and fires it, sending him flying out of the ring. From the sidelines, Shen is impressed by the show of dominance. He's happy to see that Goku's finally bested Tien, having become the new top student. Of course, he has to beat Roshi first, but that's not too hard of a feat to do, considering he just beat a stronger opponent. But Goku would care less about the title that Shen gives him, he's ready for his next adventure. Shen had overheard conversations about the Dragon Balls that Goku had searched for before. He wants them, maybe he can wish to become younger once again. This leads to Goku tracking down Bulma in hopes of finding them. He wants one in specific. He wants to find his grandpa's Dragon Ball to remind himself not to put too much trust in any human. Ironically enough, these beliefs are challenged every time he encounters them. Speaking of, she has a radar ready and prepped. She agrees to help him, let's just say that in a way, she's intrigued by him as well. But the two don't know is that the Red Ribbon Army is also on the hunt for the Dragon Balls. The first one is near the Ox King, which is an easy retrieval for them, but following that, the two get looped into the conflict between the Pilaf Gang and Colonel Silver. Pilaf and his crew are forced back by the immense amount of troops under Silver's control, but Goku swoops in and one-shots the Colonel, killing him on the spot. He quickly dismantles their forces and using the capsules they steal, Bulma drives them to a nearby village. They hear about the chief being kept hostage in Muscle Tower, and while Goku wants to leave, Bulma convinces him to help out the village as the two head for the tower. Goku easily takes out the soldiers, but as he enters, the massive brute Major Metallotron meets him. He fires giant missiles at Goku, all which the sand can avoid, but this distracts him enough for the Major to put a tight grip on him. Goku struggles to get out, but he gets his hand free and fires a blast that puts a hole in the Major's chest, rendering him dead. He moves past Ninja Murasaki pretty easily, but the ninja manages to release Android 8, who Goku sees no point in saving this time around and uses his strongest tri beam to blast to oblivion. The Buyan monster provides a real challenge for Goku with none of his attacks or his strength doing anything. The monster is practically invulnerable, at least to his attacks. It sends Goku back, about to kill Bulma, but the sand dashes forward, cracking the wall behind him, which freezes the monster. It might be invulnerable to attack, but it's not invulnerable to weather. Goku punches the frozen Buyan, shattering him. The general is the last foe, but he might as well be the easiest. With Goku squaring up to face him, General White takes advantage of seemingly his only weakness. He points again at Bulma, telling the Saiyan to stand down. Goku doesn't take lightly to this, pretending to do as told, but he uses the after image, appearing to be in the same spot, but in truth, he gets in front of the gun, kicking it away before blasting White out of the tower and miles away, rendering him unalive. The next Dragon Ball is located underwater, and while Goku is strong, he can't swim down that far. Bulma seeks Roshi's help for this, and Goku by extension of Shen despises him, but yet again, Bulma keeps him calm and collected for this to all work smoothly. While there, they accidentally partner up with the turtle students, Krillin and Chi Chi, with Chi Chi's main objective being to figure out why Goku is choosing Bulma over her. As they enter the cave where the Dragon Ball supposedly is, they encounter General Blue. While Blue is powerful in his own right, he greatly overestimates himself and heavily underestimates his opponents. He walks in believing he could challenge two members of the Turtle School and one very aggressive version of Goku. Being attacked by the robotic pirates at the same time, they split off with Blue taking on Chi Chi and Krillin while Goku quickly deals with the bot. Blue uses his telepathy to paralyze Chi Chi, charging at Krillin with a rock, nearly bashing his head on, but he dodges before punching him in the face. Blue doesn't flinch, but his distraction allows Chi Chi to escape and land a kick that actually does affect him. The two fire a collective Kamehameha at him, but he manages to battle it with his telekinesis, pushing the beam back by affecting their minds. It's then that Goku tags him, firing a Dodon Ray as together they overcome him and kill the general. They get the Dragon Ball, and it's then that the Red Ribbon Army hires Tao Pai Pai to take out Goku. Tao accepts the offer without a second thought. While he knows that Goku is his brother's disciple and top student, he's getting paid to take him out, and he is a mercenary. On top of that, he's been waiting to face Goku again. He just did didn't think it would happen like this. Goku and Bulma end up around Karin Tower with Bora and Upa as Tower approaches them at top speed. Goku senses him coming, pushing Bulma out of the way as he's hit with a Dodon Ray. Getting up to see his opposer, Goku smiles, ready to finally put this battle behind him, and put Tao down. He and Tao exchange blows, going toe-to-toe -to -toe as they have the same fighting style and basically the same teacher. Since the last time the two fought, Goku's technique and power has increased significantly. They land kicks on each other, landing down on the floor, smirking before firing full-power Dodon Rays at one another. The beam struggle intensifies, but it's then that they're 
Cody fighting comes out of Tao. He grins, using his other hand to fire a beam at Bulma. Goku rushes to take the brunt of it, but he's too late. The blast goes through Bulma's heart, killing her right in front of him. This breaks Goku. His power starts to erupt as he shakes the area around them. His eyes turn yellow as an image of the great ape surrounds him. He grabs his head, screaming in anger, looking up with his only target being Tao. The mercenary doesn't have a good feeling about this as he gets ready for round two, but he wasn't expecting what was about to happen. Goku appears in front of him, punching him in the face as blood pours out of his mouth. He kicks him in the stomach, sending him flying through the mountain behind them. Flying back to the other end, Goku fires a beam that stuns Tao midair as he falls to the floor. He flies in one last time, going straight through his opponent, killing Tao. He passes out afterwards, and when he wakes up, it finally sets in that the one friend he ever had was dead. But this isn't something he wants to accept, and he simply can't. This leads him back to Roshi's island, and that leads him to Roshi's sister, the fortune teller Baba. She agrees to lead Goku to the last Dragon Ball if he does something for her first. Goku tells her that he'll do anything, with Baba requesting that he go through the fighters that she's prepared for him, and if he beats each and every one of them, she'll give him the information he seeks. Goku's taken aback by this request, realizing that this shouldn't be an issue given his strength. He'll mow through these fighters, and it's proven that he can with his first victim being a fighter named Bandages, an easy opponent he manages to defeat with a single blow. But the next fighter is quite the challenge, not because of his strength, but because of his abilities. Spike the Devil Man has a technique known as the Devil Might Beam, capable of destroying any person who has even an ounce of evil in their heart. Originally, when Goku was hit by it, nothing happens, because he was pure-hearted, but this time, that's going to be a bit of an issue. Goku couldn't dodge originally, so there's two options here. One, he gets hit and dies on contact, or two, he dodges it. So, with that that said, we're gonna go with option 2 to keep the story going. While Spike does have an interesting technique, his strength is no match for Goku, with the Saiyan easily defeating him. However, that's not it. The last fighter is most impressive, a fighter with a fox mask on with fighting ability that Goku recognizes, and techniques that Goku's seen before like the Kamehameha. Goku has the advantage until his opponent grabs onto his tail, rendering him unable to move. This is followed by the fighter throwing Goku back and forth again and again until the tail is no longer attached to him. This sets Goku first into pain and then rage, realizing that this fighter just took his ability to transform into the Great Ape, a power that's almost like a drug to him. Before Goku can strike back, the man takes off his mask, revealing himself to be Gohan, none other than Goku's adoptive grandfather, the one he murdered. Goku can't help but get even more angered. Gohan attacked him once before, and that's what led him to be killed. He's put him down before, no reason he can't do it again, and he has more reason to do so. He comes back and takes away his tail, the one thing that can grant him more power than he can imagine. However, Gohan's unwilling to give up on him. He's taken away the tail because he knows that Goku Goku can't necessarily control that power. It only amplifies his urge to do harm. Even though he was killed by Goku, Gohan sees a light within him that no one else does. He thinks he can reach him, attempting to talk to Goku. With a tear streaming down Goku's face, he gives the impression of a hug. As Gohan comes in, believing that he had gotten through to him, Goku's frown turns into an evil smirk as he takes his hand through Gohan's heart, with his eyes turning yellow. Gohan dies while dead. This results in his soul being completely erased from any plane of existence. With this deed done, Baba refuses to give Goku the answer he was searching for as he's simply a monster in her eyes. This leaves Goku empty and a new emotion overtakes him. Regret. Sadness. By killing the man that raised him, he took away his ability to revive the person he loves. What has he done? For the following three years, Goku trains vigorously on Mount Paozu, and training is all he does. He isolates himself from the rest of the world like he had done once before. Tian and Chaozu are sent by Shen to locate Goku and check in on his progress in finding the Dragon Balls, but they never did. Shen assumes that he's dead, and this leads him to the conclusion that someone is targeting him. First, Tao was killed, and now Goku's missing. Little did he know that those two occurrences are directly linked, just not in the way that he thinks. Shen's quick to make assumptions that it was a turtle school, but one minute of thought puts that away. He and Roshi might be lifelong rivals, but he knows that Roshi's too pure to do something like that. However, the minute he finds out who was involved, there's no doubt he'll have their head. Goku's training continues to intensify. It goes from multiple hours doing every hardcore training exercise to meditation and attempting to clear his head and gain better access over the Ikari form. Following this time skip, another tournament would take place where both the Crane and Turtle Schools would participate once more, but Goku continues to isolate himself. The winner of this tournament would still remain to be Tien, and who he fights doesn't really matter. More importantly though, this tournament leads to an interaction between Shen and Roshi where he brings up the deaths of Tao and Goku but Roshi's quick to clear it up for him. Tao was hired to kill Goku and killed Bulma which resulted in Goku killing Tao. He doesn't really know what happened after he sent Goku to his sister which is new information to Shen but information that he needed to know. Not long after, various children of Piccolo arrive targeting every martial artist present. The large group of fighters are attacked by the children of Piccolo. The Crane School and the Turtle Hermit School are forced to work together with Shen and Roshi powering up as drum charges towards them. They both strike him collectively, opening the way for Tien to fire 
fire a tri-beam which obliterates him, Trilling gets charged by Tambourine and before anyone can jump in, the child of Piccolo slices open his throat and kills him on the tournament stage. Symbol also manages to take out Chaozu which leads Tien to get enraged as he kicks him away before firing a Doran Ray that obliterates him. The group capture Tambourine and start to interrogate him. Roshi and Shen are familiar with Piccolo and recognize who they are, but their question is, how? When Tambourine laughs at them without giving an answer, it leads to Shen powering up and taking him out. Piccolo himself is after the large cluster of Dragon Balls that are out Mount Pauzu with Goku. Speaking of, it's been years since Goku's interacted with anyone, he's simply been training, pushing his body to the limit since Bulma died. This Goku is far more dangerous than anyone Piccolo's took on. He lands down in front of the Saiyan, asking him to hand over the Dragon Balls, and Goku does not appreciate his training being interrupted. He gets up, slowly walking towards Piccolo, looking up, and simply saying, no. Angered, Piccolo goes to attack him, but Goku easily dodges, appearing behind him. What do you want? Goku asks. A sweat drops down Piccolo's face as he attempts to land a kick on him, but Goku punches him away. Landing down in front of him, Goku says once more, I asked, what do you want? Piccolo gets up, sending Blast towards the Saiyan, but Goku slaps them all away, reiterating his question one last time. What the hell do you want? Finally responding, the Demon King shouts that he wants a Dragon Ball, and Goku smirks come get them. The two get into a short fight in which Goku dominates. He doesn't even need to use his Ikari form to best this foe. He kicks Piccolo through Gohan's house and into the mountains behind. Flying up over the Demon King, he fires a tri-beam, powering up into Ikari. Seeing his end is near, Piccolo spits out an egg in the distance and dies as the blast comes in contact. Goku knows what he did and starts to look for whatever got thrown in the distance as he comes across a hatched egg. After searching around some more, Goku sees a little green child. Piccolo Jr, if you will. With Piccolo knowing his purpose, he tries to attack Goku, but of course he's unable to do anything. Looking down at the child, Goku smiles. This is going to be interesting. The Z Fighters land at Piccolo's base of operations where they find the last child, Piano. After beating him down, they ask where the Demon King is, to which he tells them the truth. He's dead. The two look at each other confused. Who could have killed him if not them? Of course, the two come to the only plausible conclusion. Goku. On the lookout, Kami's been watching events unfold and realizes he has to step in. Goku has taken in Piccolo's offspring, which could be dangerous down the line. He needs to do something. While Goku and Piccolo are getting accustomed to each other, one day the Dragon Balls start to fly away. Goku jumps to chase after them, but they're too quick. They continue to fly all the way up to Kami's lookout, where he summons Shenron to revive all that were killed by Piccolo and his henchmen, before getting in telepathic communication with Shen and Roshi, asking them to come to the lookout, but also bring Ten Shin. Kami's taken a special interest in Tien, recognizing his potential and youth as a weapon they can use against Goku and Piccolo if need be. Speaking of, the two initially find it difficult to get along. Of course, the tension is there with Piccolo attempting to kill him on multiple occasions. Piccolo's goal is to kill Goku and take revenge for him killing his father, but Goku just wants to train. Day in and day out, that's all he does. Eventually, Piccolo joins him, and the two get stronger together. Piccolo realizes that he has no chance of getting that strong, and even if he tried to, Goku wouldn't stop him, so why not just do it with him? Over time, the two of them would become close. Understanding the predicament that the Demon King had Goku in and why he was killed, Piccolo comes to terms with it. On the lookout, Tien had also gone through rigorous training, and with his mental fortitude much stronger than Goku's original self, he's able to spend more time in the time chamber, but the one thing he lacks is a training partner. He needs that to improve at a more significant rate. Eight years pass, with Tien's power level being at 800 while Goku and Piccolo have reached 1000. It's then that the balance of power shifts as Raditz comes crashing down to Earth. After taking out the farmer, he's on the search for Goku and Piccolo, and considering their much higher power levels and the fact that they're actively training, Raditz knows where they are. It's just a matter of flying there. At the same time, Kami senses his arrival and sends Tien to join in as well. He has a bad feeling about it. Raditz arrives first, and as they feel his power, it shocks and excites the two. He starts explaining Goku's life story and reveals the join or die portion in which Goku doesn't take too kindly. He refuses and Raditz tries to attack him, but Goku's able to evade. Piccolo tries to jump in, but it's then that Tien arrives. This confuses everyone, but his goal is Piccolo, so Tien charges in, starting his fight while Goku and Raditz trade blows. Piccolo smiles, taking off his weighted gear as the two charge towards each other, exchanging punches before Tien jumps back and fires a blast which Piccolo brushes off. He lands a kick to Tien, sending him flying back as he teleports behind behind him, meeting him with a Masenko to the back. Tien gets up, using a solar flare to blind Piccolo as he fires multiple Doran rays, bombarding his opponent. When that barrage ends and Piccolo can see once more, he's met with a tri-beam from above. On the other hand, Goku and Raditz's fight rage is on, with Raditz once more stating the join or die sentiment, but Goku plans to do neither of those. He lands a kick to Raditz's stomach, which doesn't do anything. Raditz flies up and blasts him with a double sundae, which leaves Goku on the ground. It's then that Goku powers up into Ikari as his eyes turn yellow. Raditz's scatter starts to beep as Goku's power level sky Skyrockets, leaving him in disbelief. Goku sees Piccolo getting beaten and charges past Raditz, landing a kick before flying forward and punching 
Tien in the face. He fires his own Dodon Ray, which leaves Tien heavily wounded. He tells Piccolo to bounce back before flying back towards Raditz, who had taken it upon himself to fire a powerball into the sky. A technique he picked over the years fighting alongside Nappa and Vegeta. Now using the same power as Goku, Raditz is far stronger than him, bringing his fist down. And while Goku can avoid some with his faster body, he's still caught multiple times. Raditz fires a beam from his mouth, stunning the Saiyan before grabbing hold of him, starting to crush his bones. Piccolo had dealt with Tien by this point and turned around to see Raditz pummeling Goku. He realized that it was time to bring out that technique he'd been coming up with, as he turns into a giant and starts to charge a special beam cannon. Goku uses a Kamehameha from his feet to escape Raditz's grip. Seeing Piccolo's attack, he gets above the Great Ape, sending down a Tri-Beam at the same time, and with the two attacks connecting with Raditz, he's put right on Death's door. He lasts a bit longer to inform them of Vegeta and Nappa before dying off completely. Goku and Piccolo understand the training ahead of them, with Kami on the other hand further distancing himself from the two. Piccolo did kill Tien, but that might work in their favor. Kami reaches King Yama, and with Tien being allowed to keep his body, he can go and train with King Kai. Kami had already collected the Dragon Ball, so he'll just use those to bring him back before the Saiyans arrive. A stronger Tien is able to make it through Snake Way faster than Goku, giving him 9 months of training over the 6 that Goku had gotten. Piccolo and Goku would train more vigorously than ever before, because that's just what they have to do to prepare. They reach a power level of around 10,000 by the end of the time period, because of the fact that they push themselves to be stronger by training together. Tien is actually able to do the same with the gravity training and the extra time himself, but he also learns the Kaioken too. Goku and Piccolo go to a wasteland awaiting Vegeta and Nappa as they crash down and destroy a city while Tien rushes through Snake Way. Goku and Piccolo exchange some words with the two Saiyans before Nappa plants Cybermen seeds to test the two. They don't disappoint, and tired of the games, Piccolo charges right for Vegeta with Nappa getting in the way. This doesn't deter Piccolo though, as he goes face first into the brute, pummeling him into the ground. Goku and Vegeta take their stances, facing off with Goku starting in base, testing the waters. He very quickly realizes that Vegeta is on a whole other level, getting beaten down. It's then that Goku's power level rises immensely. Vegeta reads 20. 30, 50, his scouter breaks as Goku's power level hits 100,000. Vegeta is left in shock. He understands that Goku is harnessing the Great Ape's power in base, but how is this possible? Goku leaves in wondering, landing a few blows that sends the prince down to the ground in agony. Piccolo and Nappa's battle concludes with Nappa getting blown to bits, and it's then that Tien arrives at the scene of the battle. Piccolo and him exchange some words, but Tien realizes that he has bigger problems right now. They both do. However, it appears that Goku is handling it pretty well. Vegeta appears to fire a blast at Goku, but as it comes forward, it goes into the air and turns into a power ball. Quickly realizing what's happening, Piccolo goes for Vegeta's tail, but the transformation had already started. Goku tries to punch him, and although it does some damage at first, soon Vegeta overtakes even Goku's power level and kicks the both of them away, stomping on Piccolo. Tien is shook by the power he feels, but quickly powers up into Kaioken times three. He looks at Goku as the two acknowledge that they'll need to team up for this one. They simultaneously head for the ape, but he punches the both of them away. They fire Dodon beams into his eyes, affecting his vision severely as Piccolo fires an explosive wave from under, knocking Vegeta on his back. As the ape tries to get up, Tien further blinds him with a solar flare. Piccolo tells the two to go and charge their strongest attacks. It's the only thing that might put him down. They nod, starting to charge powerful tribeams. Piccolo transforms into his giant form looking ahead at Vegeta. He runs for the ape as the two exchange blows, but Piccolo is on the losing foot, getting beaten in. Vegeta grabs his arms and flings them away before turning around to see two very powerful blasts heading towards him. He gets a blast into the earth, more and more with every wave unable to escape. Piccolo extends his arm, grabbing onto Vegeta's leg and tripping him forward. With one final push, Tien powers up into Kaku times 4 with Goku pouring every last bit of energy he has. The three manage to stop Vegeta collectively. Tien looks at the two, but he decides that now is not the time. Heading for the lookout, Kami is in deep thought as well. The two saved Earth today, but they still have evil heart. Goku and Piccolo continue their training, but soon it becomes less and less effective. Goku especially feels the weight of this, realizing that they have to do something different. But what? Now, onto the Frieza side of things, he wouldn't come to Earth for Dragon Balls or anything like that because there was really no mention of it, so all he really cares about is what the hell happened to his men. He would send some soldiers out to look for them on their last known location of Earth, but they would be stopped by Tien and the Z Fighters. Tien had suggested to Kami that he needs to bring on the rest of the group as well. He's not enough anymore. So while he trained on King Kai's to further improve Kaioken and his training, Krillin and Chi-Chi would go through training with Kami before also learning the Kaioken for themselves. The Kaioken is a human's best friend. Frieza, having heard no word from the soldiers he sends, still wants know what happened, but doesn't want to go down himself, so he sends in the Ginyu Force this time. As they land, they alert every fighter on the planet, with Ginyu alone having a power level of 120,000. The Z Fighters arrive as well as Piccolo and Goku, having a brief word with each other before Goku charges for the strongest power level he could sense. He rushes Ginyu, landing a punch to his face after powering up into his car. Jace and Birdo rush towards Piccolo, with Tien, Chi Chi, and Krillin taking on Goldo and Raccoon. Tien uses Kaioken to power through Goldo's time freeze and slices his head off, with three Z Fighters preparing a beam to end Raccoon. While he tries to fire back, it isn't enough to 
stop three collective attacks. Piccolo's fight is closer with Jason Berter quite synchronized. He's able to fight fairly well, but it takes Tien jumping in for them to win completely. Goku and Ginyu's fight is much closer, but once Ginyu realizes Goku is a bit stronger, he tries to body swap. Piccolo sees the beam coming, realizing that it's something odd, so he jumps in front of it, getting body swapped with Ginyu's. This leaves a confused Goku, but after some time, the confusion is sorted out as Piccolo and Ginyu's body yells at Goku to fix this immediately. He beats Piccolo's body, who is Ginyu, into submission, eventually changing bodies again into his normal self, with Goku killing him after the fact. They learn the name Frieza, which Kami confirms with King Kai about realizing the threat they face. He contacts Goku and Piccolo to come to the lookout. He knows they need to be on a united front to face this challenge. As they arrive, the Z Fighters face them down, unsure of what's to come. One thing's for sure, Goku's always ready for a good fight. Together, Tien, Chi Chi, Krillin, Goku, and Piccolo train for the next year in preparation for this overwhelming threat. For the most part, the humans would train together and further their Kaioken while Goku discovers a way of training to further improve his strength. By being informed of the gravity on King Kai's planet as well as the time chamber, Goku also recalls the Saiyans mentioning something about Earth's gravity being much weaker. Putting the pieces together, Goku wishes to go to King Kai's and do the gravity training, but even though Kami is willing to cooperate with them, he won't send Goku to King Kai. And King Kai won't take him for that matter. So he resorts to a second option, a way to generate gravity stronger than Earth's. Who could do that? And the only person that comes to his mind is Dr. Briefs, Bulma's father. He would know of Goku to some degree as a friend of Bulma, at the least, so he has no issue doing this for him, especially because it's to save the world or whatever. So Goku and Piccolo would spend majority of their time training in the gravity chamber. Tien may also capitalize on this, knowing the boost that just 10 times gravity provided, although it is quite awkward for them all to train together. Following the year, Chi Chi and Quillen would be considerably powerful, but the weakest of the group, at a power levels of 2.5 million. Tien would reach Goku's original power level in the later end of the Namek Saga of 3 million. Piccolo would be second up with 7 million, while Goku himself is getting Namek level Zenkai's because it's that time of Dragon Ball, pushing him upwards of 10 million. Shen and Roshi are also training in this time, but what they offer isn't solely strength, it's more technique. So while they do get stronger, it's not the strength that matters. Frieza and his soldiers descend onto Earth as the Z Fighters collectively charge towards the location, arriving and facing off their biggest threat collectively. Frieza starts to talk, noting that Goku is a Saiyan. He's hoping to conquer this planet and sell it for profit at the least, but he's also going to kill them all for eliminating some of his top soldiers. Goku smiles and charges right for him, catching the Emperor off guard, punching him through his ship. The soldiers charge forward with Goku pushing through as the Z Fighters charge right in. Frieza quickly realizes that his first form is no match for this Saiyan, so he powers up slowly. Goku easily dismantles his second and third form as well. He tells him to stop messing around with Frieza saying, as you please. A fiery purple aura coats Frieza as he transcends into his fourth and final form. He stops at about 50%, plenty to send Goku into a shock. He's not too worried yet as he still has the Ikari form to show off, but this doesn't stop him from charging in using his base form first. Goku rushes in, but Frieza easily evades, catching Goku with his tail as he punches him repeatedly before kicking him off into the city. He meets him on the other end with a blast that sends Goku crashing down, destroying many buildings and killing many people. Goku could care less about the lives of the people that are dying, he simply only cares about the fight. Realizing he has no chance, Goku pulls out the Ikari form and gets the advantage once more, charging up as he sends Frieza hurtling down into a sea of people, firing multiple blasts before firing a tribeam that levels the entire city. Resilient as ever though, Frieza remains living, albeit furious as hell. He starts to finally go all out, charging up into his full power form, but as he starts to do so, Tien and Chi Chi charge in with Kaioken times 20, collectively kicking Frieza away. Krillin charges up a Destructo Disc as Shen and Roshi prepare to collectively use the Mafuba if all else fails. Tien starts to charge the strongest tribeam as Chi Chi charges up a Kamehameha, telling Goku to fire up the strongest attack he can muster. But he is conflicted. Goku wants the best fight possible. If he doesn't let Frieza go all out, he's not gonna get that. He doesn't want this. He fires a warning blast at Krillin telling him and the others to stop, but they have no plans of doing so. Kami's instructions are clear, stop Frieza at all costs, and if Goku gets in the way, stop him too. It becomes clear to the Saiyan that him and them are no longer on the same team. The group direct the blasts that were intended for Frieza at Goku and he's pummeled repeatedly into the ground but just barely surviving. Piccolo sees the change in the battle and disarms Krillin before charging at Tien as they start with their same old game again. However, it's actually quite one-sided. With Tien having the Kaioken, Piccolo can't do much against him. Goku, on the other hand, is pissed. Corrupting his aura in his Ikari form, Goku goes around one by one, taking them all down. He knocks down Chi Chi with a gut-wrenching punch, appearing behind Krillin next and knocking him out with a blow to the neck. Seeing their pupils drop like flies, Roshi and Shen have to do what they have to do, firing a Mafuba at Goku as they slowly start to die. Goku erupts his aura in an attempt to stop them, and it's working, but what really shifts the tide is the fact that their Mafuba kills them before it can stop Goku. Unlike the other, Shen and Roshi aren't taken down, they're taken out, with their age playing a huge factor in this. This enrages Tien as he utilizes his maximum 
maximum level of Kaioken to bulldoze past Piccolo and charge towards Goku, fighting him with two more arms sprouting out. The two go on for an even exchange, exhausting each other out, forgetting that the real enemy is still well and alive. Frieza emerges now in his full power state as the two are forced to finish their feud later on, and focus on the greater threat. Frieza easily dismantles the two of them, knocking them into the ground as he rises up, charging a death ball capable of blowing up the planet. The two fire their strongest beam attacks to counter, but the end looks very near. That is, until Frieza screams in agony, with Krillin having mustered up the last of his strength into a destructo disc. He used it to chop off Frieza's tail. This took everything out of him, and he too dies of exhaustion. This gives Goku and Tien the opportunity to give one final push, and when Piccolo from the distance helping out with an attack of his own, Frieza is overtaken. But they aren't done. Tien had just lost both his masters and one of his closest friends. Beaten and bruised, the two can barely stand, but they take their fighting stances ready to go at it. It's then that Frieza resurfaces. He's not gonna go down that easy. The two are too weak to fight him, enduring further torture as he fires death beam after death beam at them, but they have allies still in the battle that are alive. Chi Chi and Piccolo resurface, and they have more strength, so they distract him while Tien tells Goku that he has an attack that might do the trick, but Goku has to help distract. Reluctantly, he agrees as Tien begins to charge the spirit bomb. Taking energy from all around the planet and the people willing to give, he fires it at Frieza, nearly killing Goku in the process, but he's run away. Frieza seemingly goes down. Tien, feeling the losses that he's endured, musters up the rest of his strength as he walks over to Goku, lifting him by the collar and charging the Doran Ray to end him. Finally, I've beaten you. As he's about to fire it, a death beam goes through him as Frieza refuses to die like an animal, coming back from the doorstep of death yet again. This death beam also goes through Goku's arm, rendering him even more immobile than he already was. Goku swings mindlessly with no power behind his punches. All seems lost as Frieza stands over him, preparing the final death beam to kill Goku. All of a sudden, Frieza is cut clean in half by a mysterious figure. As Goku looks on, he sees a man with golden hair and a Capsule Corp logo on his shirt. It is indeed Future Trunks. Now, a lot of the times when I get to Future Trunks in my what ifs, people always ask questions about how it's even possible without Vegeta, and this time without even Bulma. People fail to understand that Future Trunks' timeline and the timeline that we're following is not the same. Trunks still travels back in time, and since we've altered the main timeline through this what if, he travels to the altered main timeline. Hopefully that clears it up, but of course, with that said, Trunks is going to be absolutely flabbergasted at what's going on. Trunks sees Piccolo struggling to walk in the distance as he goes to help him up, but as he grabs onto him, Piccolo passes out, as well as Goku. Once the two wake up, they get the rundown from Trunks about who he is, and as expected, it comes as an extreme shock to Goku. This kid is somehow Bulma's son. He looks into his eyes, knowing he would know if he was lied to, but with that said, as he looks ahead at future Trunks, his look of confusion changes to a look of shock. That look soon represents itself as sadness with him remembering what he had lost. With a somber tone, he tells Trunks that Bulma is dead. Trunks is surprised this timeline is extremely dark, but it's gonna get worse once the androids arrive so he needs to fix this. He informs Goku and Piccolo of the androids, but as he's about to leave, Goku is curious to know what that golden-haired form was, which is yet another shock to Trunks. He can't leave this timeline in good conscience. The androids will tear Goku apart. He doesn't even know Super Saiyan. So for a while, Trunks stays with them, starting to teach Goku Super Saiyan and how to unlock it with Piccolo training alongside them. The main component of Super Saiyan is anger, and Goku has a lot of that. He starts to think back to the betrayal he faced with Grandpa Gohan, the Z Fighters turning on him against Frieza. That didn't need to happen. They didn't need to die. And the final nail in the coffin is Bulma's death. This triggers Goku's transformation and with a bright yellow aura, he achieves Super Saiyan. Trunks is shocked. Goku is far stronger than even himself, and with Piccolo training alongside him, his power level would also go up significantly. All while this is going down, Kami is on the lookout thinking of what to do next. King Kai communicates with him, telling him not to lose hope. Everyone with the exception of Tien can still be revived, and Kami gathers a Dragon Ball doing exactly that. But he also wishes for something else, for Shen and Roshi to be brought back into their youth. This is an important wish, because now that he's lost Tien, he's putting all his faith into Roshi and Shen. He knows their potential, but their bodies are a huge drawback. That's the whole reason they died performing the Mafuba. On top of that, he also makes sure they utilize their time in the time chamber. No way can they afford to die again, so he's playing every card he has. Eventually, Trunks would go back to his timeline with the full well intention of coming back and in the meantime Goku and Piccolo continue to grow. With Goku having Ikari and Super Saiyan, things are looking up. Eventually, the Android would attack the city, and Goku would have taken his heart medication ahead of time because of Piccolo's insistence. It's also Piccolo who's first to notice that these androids are not the same androids Trunks was describing. After their near-death experience to Frieza and needing to be saved, Piccolo 
was trying to get every advantage possible. He spoke extensively with Trunks about the threat to come. The androids he described should look like cocky teenagers, but he's looking at an old man and a robot. Something's wrong, but they're still being attacked, so he just fights. Goku still has no regard for the lives of the people in the city, so he simply powers up into Super Saiyan and starts his fight with 19 right then and there. Piccolo rushes at Jiro and the two are able to fight fairly well against the android. Goku's clumsiness does cost him a few shots from 19 because of the android's ability to absorb energy, but once that's figured out, it's not an issue of defeating them. However, Piccolo is filled with concern about the situation. Kami can sense the conflict within him, and he knows what he's thinking, so he would send out the Z fighters to search for Jiro's lab, but without Bulma, there's no luck. Trunks would eventually come out and confirm their suspicions, and while he and Goku search for Jiro's lab, Piccolo sneaks off to the side, being called upon by Kami. As he arrives on the lookout, there's a shared feeling of concern that takes over. Piccolo can sense Kami's thoughts. Kami's fear. He asks what it is, and Kami relays the information. He fears that something that disobeys nature itself is out there. It's on its way, and now is not the time to make or break alliances. The only thing that matters is defeating this thing. Kami walks forward. This is probably stupid of me, but he jerks his hand forward, placing it on Piccolo's chest. I trust you to make the right decision. Kami forces a fusion between the two, of course giving Piccolo the body and the power, but instilling him with the wisdom of God. Deep down, Kami knows that an alliance between them is incapable of working because of Goku. Piccolo could take over Earth in a heartbeat, but he hasn't. He just wants a good fight like Goku, but not at the same scale. He might want it in his heart, but it's not in his blood like the Saiyan lust for battle. Kami had to put trust in Piccolo because the threat to come is far greater than any of them. Piccolo's power erupts, surpassing Goku's by a mile, but with that power, Kami an understanding of what Kami wanted, and Piccolo feels as if he has to carry that out. He immediately rushes to talk to Trunks and Goku about it, and while Trunks completely agrees, Goku gives a stern no. Like with any other threat, he just wants the best fight possible, and for the first time, Piccolo disagrees. He stands his ground. He tells him that this is bigger than his pride. He has to see that. They need to destroy this thing. Oh, Piccolo, you think you can stop me? I am perfection. I am unstoppable, and I will destroy all of you. Cell's voice rings through the ears of Piccolo, Goku, and Trunks, a fear like never before taking them over. Cell warns them of the torment awaiting them. He gives them 10 days to muster up whatever strength they can, and after that, the Cell games will commence. Even Goku feels fear like never before. Who was that? What was that? Piccolo gathers all the fighters on Earth and becomes the bridge that Kami hoped he would be. He unites the two groups, and while Goku is reluctant, he's offered training in the time chamber, which will suffice for now. But he starts to become distant with Piccolo, seeing him change in real time. Regardless of that, he thinks Trunks will be a better fighter to train with given their same biology, and the fact that the only way to beat Cell is to find a new evolution. The year in the room gives him enough time to unlock full power Super Saiyan, but it's important to realize that Goku doesn't have a Gohan in this timeline. There is no other person to carry the burden of defeating Cell, so he doesn't just sit on his hand through the remainder of the nine days. Goku and Trunks would fulfill their second year, and while neither of them have the emotional trigger to unlock Super Saiyan 2, they do get far stronger. The humans are left far behind at this point, with Piccolo training to keep up. However, he too can only do so much. The Cell games would come around with Goku being the first to step up. He starts to power up, shocking Cell as the bio android realizes that Goku is just as strong, no, stronger than even him. Goku takes the advantage early in the fight, having more brute force and power, but Cell's abilities help him to keep up. The combined skill set of the Z fighters are instilled within him, so he does what he can. To level the playing field, Cell reveals a shocking twist in the battle. He smirks and shouts, Kaioken. Goku starts to get concerned. Maybe he can't win, but he won't let up. The two continue to trade blows with Cell's regeneration, allowing him to maintain Kaioken while Goku starts to get exhausted. The Saiyan has one last ditch effort to attempt before he goes down. He rushes for Cell, who charges right back at him, but Goku uses the after image to appear behind Cell and sends him crashing to the floor. He appears in front of him, grabbing his legs and throwing him side to side before flying right above him and charging a Neo Tribeam. An ultimate attack he knows Cell can't survive. Piccolo shouts at him, Goku, no, you can't, you'll destroy Earth. Goku hears these words, but he doesn't care. This is the only way to stop Cell. He knows it. Cell himself realizes Goku won't stop. He's filled with fear, knowing he may not come back from this. Goku looks at Trunks, reminding him of Bulma as a buildup of emotions releases right upon Cell, with the full might of the Neo Tribeam. Wave after wave, Cell is pushed down into the Earth until he's seemingly obliterated, and by some miracle, the Earth remains intact. As the Z Fighters let out a sigh of relief, Goku starts to walk back, letting down his guard, but it's then that an immense energy behind appears, launching a blast that goes straight past him and into Trunks. Cell emerges stronger than ever as he achieves his super perfect form, through means of regeneration. Goku isn't focused on that though, he looks at the light lifeless body of Trunks as he realizes that he's let down Bulma once again. Although it isn't his Bulma, that kid is her son in his timeline. He's failed again, and like before, he'll get revenge again. 
His aura erupts as Goku achieves Super Saiyan 2, charging for Cell, landing blow after blow after blow. Cell's face is completely mutilated by the time he's done. He grabs Cell's body by the throat and throws him in the sky, charging up a Kamehameha that fully annihilates him this time around. Piccolo walks over to a tearful Goku, lifting him up as he tells him that this can be fixed. He had knowledge of his home world through King Kai and knows that they can use the Namekian Dragon Balls to fix this. Goku and Piccolo make the journey and with the Namekians are able to use the first wish to revive Trunks, and it's then that Piccolo turns to him. You can revive Bulma, you know, but Goku smiles. Yeah. I could. He looks up at Purunga, and before telling him to send them back home, he makes a decision to revive Tien, shocking Piccolo. He then says, teleport us back home, and the dragon does his toll. Goku tells Trunks before he leaves to tell Bulma he thinks about her every day, and as the sun sets, Goku looks ahead, finally allowing himself to give a fulfilled goodbye to Bulma, and really ready to move on. With Piccolo doing what he did in helping revive Trunks, Goku doesn't hold any grudges. Their bond is actually stronger than ever, and Goku also makes amends with all the Z Fighters, having revived Tien for that purpose. They're not actually gonna forgive him and all for quite a while considering how many of them he's killed and Tien's died more than once, but they do also acknowledge that he's back because of him. So for now, everyone is cool with each other. This is followed by many years of peace, because there's no longer a conflict to revolve, and the Z Fighters can actually live their lives without worrying about training for Goku. So in that spirit, Tien and Chi-Chi would now be a couple, and Roshi goes back to Kame House alongside Shen as the two continue their training in peace because they have their young bodies. The 25th World Martial Arts Tournament would come around with Goku, Piccolo, and Tien being the only three participants participants from the group. Tien would probably end up being the sacrifice against Kibito, and as he's healed, he understands why, and then they all follow Spopovich and Yamu to Babidi's ship. Kibito dies when Deborah realizes they're there, but no one gets stoned. Goku, Piccolo, Tien, and Shin enter the ship, but with the lack of two other Saiyans, there's no feud to fight. But for the sake of it, let's say Tien fights first, defeating Pui Pui with the use of Kaioken, Piccolo defeats Yakon, similarly to Goku by feeding him energy, and Goku takes on Deborah. While not having Super Saiyan 3 this time around, simply because there's less time to achieve it, and I just don't think it's realistic, Goku would power up to Super Saiyan 2, realizing just how strong Deborah is. But with that said, the fight is still one-sided. A Super Saiyan 2 Goku in this what-if would far surpass his canon counterpart. Without being able to turn Goku Majin because he doesn't desire more power to beat anyone like Vegeta did, it's kind of a dud for the Majins. Further defense for Goku not going Majin is that even though his heart isn't 100% pure, willpower is also taken into account. Vegeta's heart wasn't fully pure in the Buu Saga, but the reason he allowed Babidi to make him Majin was for a power-up. Goku has no similar desires, so it just doesn't work. Eventually, Babidi would be defeated with Bora killed and the egg secured. This gives us four more years, and it is likely that Goku can achieve Super Saiyan 3 in this time. But of course, when Beerus wakes up in search of a Super Saiyan God, all goes to hell. Even with Super Saiyan 3, there's no hope of Goku winning, and literally no other Saiyan on Earth for a God ritual. Whis does mention two Saiyans on Vampa, and here is where the story could go two ways. The more likely option is that Beerus would just destroy Earth and everyone alongside it, but the other outcome is that Goku convinces him somehow that he can train to fight him later on. I think because the story story ends in the first option, we can slightly explore option 2 and see how it goes. What I think is possible is Shin appearing in front of Beerus and telling him that Goku saved his life by fighting Deborah and stopping Boo from coming out. This would help convince Beerus in part, with the other part being Goku's willingness to train and achieve Super Saiyan God, something that Shin suggests Whis could help with. We are reaching here, but for the sake of the story, let's continue. Goku would likely train with Whis and unlock Super Saiyan God, eventually fighting Beerus as he does. This would convince Beerus to let him and Earth live as Goku is able to put up a good fight. He would then continue his training with Whis, unlocking Blue, and of course this leads us right into ROF, where Sorbet would have to use Namekian Dragon Balls to revive Frieza. He would have to use the other wish to transport Frieza to Namek. This is where Frieza puts in his four months and attacks Earth. The Z Fighters try their best to defend, but with Piccolo and Tien being the only options to fight Frieza, it's not looking great. Without instant transmission, Goku can't get to Earth instantaneously, so Piccolo thinks up the next best thing, which is to contact Shin and make it happen, because otherwise they all die. This works out, and Goku arrives to face down Frieza. The two go at it, with Goku being able to keep up with Frieza's final form in just his base form. The two would eventually go all out with Blue and Golden being unleashed. They're even at first, but Goku points out the fault in Frieza's form, eventually beating him down and without the flaws of mercy weighing on him, he kills Frieza and Sorbet before they can pull off anything. This opens up Piccolo's eyes, realizing he is too weak he would enlist Tien and ask Shin to train them. This path would lead to training with the Z Sword, where I still wouldn't put it past them to break it in one way or another. Also, because we'd love to see an ultimate Piccolo. Why the hell not? Elder Kai would thank the two by unleashing their potentials, and the two would train immensely with this. Now, here's the kicker. In Dragon Ball Super Superhero, Piccolo wished for a potential unlock. That one was similar to the potential unlock that Krillin and Gohan received on Namek from Guru. As we know, Elder Kai's potential unlock is much greater. So this definitely puts Piccolo back on the map and very competitive with Goku. Likely being 
even stronger than him. This leads us right into the Tournament of Destroyers, where the team would consist of Goku, Piccolo, Tien, Roshi, and Manaka. Goku is likely to go first, and I'm just gonna go through this part pretty quickly because in essence it's fairly similar to the original. Goku beats Batamo and loses to Frost because of the needle. Piccolo loses to Frost because of the needle as well, and with three eyes, Tien catches the cheating, reinstating the two fighters that got out. With Ultimate, Tien can withstand Megeta for some time until the insults are brought in, and we know how that goes. I think it's fair to say that without Super Saiyan, Tien could put up a fight against Kaba, but I feel like Kaba would still win. So Piccolo steps in, and with his ultimate, he can defeat Kaba pretty easily. This would lead to a great fight with Piccolo and Hit, where Piccolo would display his ultimate form and fight competitively with Hit. He would use tactics to protect his time skip and be able to block in many instances. It would be a hard-fought battle that, and hold on for a second, I think would go to Piccolo. Here's why. Even though it was many arcs down the line, I can pretty confidently say that everyone knows Piccolo's power didn't fluctuate too much during all of Super. Maybe he got a few times stronger, but with Guru's potential unlocked from Shenron, he was able to match Gamma 2, who was made out of data from Goku and Vegeta from the Moro arc. And with guys who can put Gamma 2 at least on the level of that Goku and Vegeta. I'm not even gonna say stronger, even though it's likely that Dr. Hedda would make him stronger than them from the Moro arc at the least. Regardless, Piccolo is fighting on par until blowing him out of the water using his orange form. I'm not saying Piccolo is as strong as with orange or anything like that, but it's reasonable to conclude that he would be at least on par with his potential Unleashed form in Superhero, with Elder Kai's potential unlock now. This puts him above hit, and time skip is the only factor that gives him some challenges to overcome, which I believe he could. Zeno would show up afterwards, and Goku isn't as unserious as canon counterpart, so when he sees what's going on, he wouldn't go and greet the king of everything. With Goku also not fighting against hit, it doesn't go all over Gaitube and Zamasu doesn't see it, which means no Goku Black, luckily. I also think that the Torment of Power is not very likely to happen here. Goku doesn't have a relationship with Zeno, and I don't think he would seek it out, even if he did. Although what could make for an interesting arc is Goku meeting Broly. Because Whis would have mentioned a remaining Saiyan that Beerus could fight, Goku would remember that later down the line and request that Whis take him to that Saiyan. This would lead Broly and Paragus out of Vampa, and they could permanently house Paragus at Earth with Goku training with Broly. I think they would probably remove the Shock Collar even with Paragus warning them, and without Vegeta there, there's really nothing to take off Paragus, so he would just be happy that he has a home. And even happier once Goku tells him that he actually killed Vegeta. Broly would obviously be a powerhouse that Goku constantly trains with. Broly may let out his power every once in a while if Goku can push him to his full power Super Saiyan form. And this would likely cause Whis to step in. Beerus may even take interest and spar with Broly from time to time because he loves to fight. I think Goku would inch towards Ultra Instinct in this time and would likely even tap into Sign sometimes but not have full control over it. He still needs a trigger. Luckily, one day on Earth, Beerus would seek out Goku, which also brings about Broly. This leads them to dynamic where they're actively going to hunt Moro. Goku would power up in the Super Saiyan Blue and try to fight Moro, who uses magic to progressively take his energy and Broly from the sidelines to get strong enough and eventually disable him. Moro would become impressively powerful, much more than even originally given Broly's power. However, seeing his friend nearly lifeless would give Broly a rage boost which would suffice in powering him at least up to Ikari and fight Moro. Moro would be taken aback by this given how much energy he's already taken from Broly, but the Saiyan keeps getting more and more powerful. Eventually, he would power up into Super Saiyan when Moro hasn't beat in Ikari, and another explosive power boost leads him to bash Moro over and over. He would eventually come to full power Super Saiyan, and let's just say Moro would be very lucky to escape this. Even though he continues to use his magic to take Broly's power, which makes him much stronger, Broly has a unique ability to grow at unprecedented heights while he fights. The energy being taken is being replenished, and even going further, so Broly would likely take out Moro here. But then he becomes the problem. With Miris knowing he can defeat Broly without using his angel powers, he would instead heal Goku and tell him that they got a huge problem on their hands. Goku looks up and charges in to try and talk Broly down, but it doesn't exactly work. Broly beats Goku senseless, and with Super Saiyan Blue, he can only stop himself from dying, only being able to defend himself. Eventually, he can't even do that, getting pummeled into the ground. This is the trigger that he needs to achieve Ultra Instinct. Goku and Broly fight all out, Namek basically becoming a wasteland as the two clash. Goku would dodge Broly's attacks and land ferocious ones of his own, but Broly counters back just as well. The two are locked in combat, and Broly would eventually get the upper hand. This would push Goku to achieving perfected Ultra Instinct. Not mastering it, but getting the white-haired version in the moment, being able to push Broly back. With better offensive movement, as well as defense, he swiftly and quickly attempts to end the fight. And it's not without his challenges, but he would eventually take Broly out with a point-blank Kamehameha, also taking himself out. Mirrors would heal the two of them, and they would gather the Namekian Dragon Balls to restore the damage they did to the planet. The two would continue their training. For Goku, he hopes to master Ultra Instinct, and for Broly, mastering his full power Super Saiyan form would be wonderful so that he doesn't go on a killing spree. The two would continue training under Whis for the foreseeable future. And I'm not going to venture into the Granola arc or superhero for this story at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed, like, subscribe, and check out this video to continue your good day on YouTube.